always praise God in this ministry. Hallelujah. It's not because I climb the pulpit. I praise God for giving opportunity to people in this ministry to grow. And I see that everybody is growing. Amen. And I'm here to grow with all in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy. I just give God all the glory. I give God all the praise for this wonderful and glorious day. Father's Day is a blessing day. It's a wonderful and glorious day. God has given them the feather to go further to bring us in order. Hallelujah. Amen. So that the home will be pleased. So that God will be glorified in our home. Because in the home, it's not arranged. Everything will be scattered outside. We just saw the drama that happened just now. The man was complaining that he doesn't have money. And the wife was not happy. But at the end of the day, the contract is looking for, he did not come as he wanted. it. Why? Because the woman is not happy at home. If your wife is not happy, something is going wrong. Your wife cannot pray for you when she's not happy. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. That the other one that always received gifts, she prayed from the bottom of her heart. Why? Because she's happy. And everything becomes smooth. Hallelujah. When a woman needs her to pray for you, you cannot be a prey. And nothing will happen to you. God. The Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, and 
my word will not pass. Why? Where are we going to be if heaven and earth pass away? It is the word of God we are going to be. So that is what we need to stay in the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to watch television. It's good to watch all those things because there are time and season for everything. The time you're supposed to study when you are watching television or watching other things, devil has still that time from you. Hallelujah. So now, as a father, we are telling our children that see what they need to be doing. Everything we are doing, we are the role model to them. It is what you inculcate in your child. That is what the child will grow up with. Amen. If you are the one that take care of your wife, take care of the mother of that a child. The child is learning that my father has never touched my mother. My father never treats my mother bad. My father always do all these things, all these things. This child is learning. You are telling that child, this is how to treat a woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you make her to cry, the children that are watching, it is God and the children and you and your wife in that home. If you want to expose things in marriage, ask the children. The children will tell you everything. Amen. Amen. You see what the drama is telling us today? I know I don't have it. You see what the drama is telling us today? The drama have already explained how it's supposed to be. Why? Because when they are talking about their fathers here, they are saying the real thing. One said, my father encouraged me. Many of us, we don't encourage our children. Anything they are doing, we always cast them down. Can't you see your mates? Don't compare. Because that child destiny and your child destiny are not the same. And don't compare your husband with others. My friend, by this, some of your friends will not tell you the truth. What they are going through, they want to push you out. Before you know it, you become alone. Hallelujah. Don't listen to them. See what Anna said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The book of First Samuel, chapter 1. We are going to see verse 8 first. See the prophecy that the husband gave to Anna. Hallelujah. Amen. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 8. What did he say? Hallelujah. They said they came her husband to her. Anna, why we pet thou? And why is it thou not? And why is thy heart grief? And not I better thou do you hear that? It didn't say daughters. That was a prophecy. Father, pray for your children. Pray for your wife. Prophesy upon her. Even though sometimes we women with our body, they do g -g -g. Don't worry. <laughs> what you need to do is to prophesy, is to pray for us. Do you know why it seems as if women respect their pastor more than their husband? You think that, but normally it's not supposed to be like that. Because as a man, as a spiritual head, as a physical head of the home, your wife is expecting you when she had a dream or when she's dreaming, she had a nightmare. You hold her hand and pray for her. Don't say go and call pastor. Don't say it's just a matron. When she's telling you, see how I'm feeling. My husband not feeling good. It, it is well with me. Lay your hand on her and pray for her. Don't say, ah, it is well. Do I just come off flag? Why? She know her body. What you need to do is to pray for her. It's to profess her upon her. Don't allow her to always come pastor. If not, that place, that area, that area, she's taking it to pastor. I know that it's good to call our pastor. But you as the head, what you need to do is to pray for her. And pray, pray, pray until something happens. Amen. Amen. Don't leave spiritual path for her. When she's praying, you are sleeping. When she's doing spiritual things, you are sleeping. Women love God. If you see women that really pray and love God and do the things of God, they are doing it with all their hearts. And when you see women that serve juju, they serve juju with all their hearts. Because spiritual things, they are there. Hallelujah. So, my beloved fathers, always stay with them spiritually. Pray for them. I know that it's not easy going to work and come back. At the end of the day, your wife said, let us pray. You have to pray no matter what. She will understand at least it joined us to pray. Amen. Amen. So now let us go. Hallelujah. Amen. Ten sons. Amen. Then see what happened. Let us go to verse 11. Hallelujah. Verse 11, what did he say? And said, O Lord of hosts, mm. if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, uh -huh. and remember 
name. Uh -huh. And not forget that. And men, uh -huh. but will give unto thee mm. and make a man, a male, a man child. Specifically, that woman specify what this is what I want. This is what I need. Father, give me this man child. I prophesy upon every woman today that has crying for that that God Almighty bring a man child to me. I pray that God will give it to you in the mighty name. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are for men today. Women don't feel bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what we need to do is to support them. They are there as a head already. They are carried the Lord already. Let us be the helper that God wants us to be. That God has destined us to be. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. She specifically said, this is what I want you to give me, Lord. Amen. This is what I want you to give me. God, give me this thing. When you give it to me, I will dedicate that child unto you. I just thank God for the life of our daddies. I always see them when they are coming to church with the family. The devil is not happy about it, daddies. Especially when it's a two days. Let me say a day or two days to program. Or a day or two days to church. Devil wants to strike with anger. They don't want to strike with misunderstanding. They don't want to strike with all kinds of things. Why? Because he know that togetherness, you will pull the kingdom down. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you know it, the man will get angry. You see the tie head tie. This is your head tie, don't do. You do the makeup. Before you know it, the woman will get angry. In fact, I'm not going to church again. Devil has sorted it. Please, a time to that day, be prayerful. Hallelujah. Amen. I know you have been praying, but this time, this guy, Saturday, Sunday, be prayerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You see what beloved said? He said, my father do what he preaches. I call it a talking a do. You talk, you do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you do good. Say this, you do it. If not, become an hypocrite. Because you know my father, you look at him. He's just saying it to our home, it's another thing. That child will never forget. Even though in the church we don't know you, your child know you, your wife know you. He will just smile. He will say, this is my honey. You people don't know him. But I trust God in the life of these wonderful fathers. They always do things that God asks them to do. And their wife are testifying to it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Even though some of us don't know how to tie the hair tie. Amen. But there are some areas that we are good. See, Sister Christine. She don't know how to tie it. But in the choir, her voice now. Nah. Please pray for her. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some things because when we said we want our husband, our wife to be perfect, we will break them. We will break them. We will never see anything to appreciate them for. But when you see that, first of all, this person is a human being. First of all, we do not grow up. Even though they are twins, they have their different character. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm appreciating Father for helping us. Because the way God creates us is different. They were created from the clay. We were created from the bone. Mm -hmm. You think we did think the same, if not the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. When we not think the same, it's not, it's not easy. When they are behaving their own side of clay, we are behaving our own side of the lips. It's not easy. Clap for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Lord is good. And all the time. Amen. So you see, the Bible said, in getting on, get understanding. It is understanding that helps us to dwell together in peace. If understanding is not there, everything will just collapse. Even when God is talking, you will not hear. The understanding will help us to know that, okay, this is how God created this woman. Dwell with her with what? With knowledge. So that she will have peace. You too, you will have peace. Amen. If you say, as a man, you want to show that, that muzzle to her, she will behave the rift that he takes from you. It will start shooking you and shooking and shooking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what we need to do is to dwell with them with understanding. And we too, as women, we have to understand the men as husbands, as fathers. So without understanding, together we train up our children. So that every, every of the society, everyone in the society will have peace. Yes. 
Because if you don't train them well, see what daddies are saying. They know how to cook. In our father's day, some people don't know how to cook that time. Some of our father is only women. I thank God for this generation. Amen. Amen. Father will carry clothes and go and wash the laundry. Then they will take rubber bag and go and buy. My father never know how to buy things in the market. Mothers will do them alone. Father of this generation, may God bless you. May God bless you. Some fathers here, they know how to clean the children's diaper. Pampas. My father never know how to carry baby. Praise God. He said the baby will break in his hand. It will not break. It's just that he's giving excuse. Amen. But fathers nowadays, they push this roller. Uh -huh. God bless you. We call it Carol in Spain. So now, because of this error, they, they have to adopt and understand the women. What they are passing through is not easy. In the favor room, it's not easy. Even when men enter there, how many men enter favor room with their wives? How many? You see there, I, I said it. Men in this ministry, they are perfect. Yeah. Hallelujah. Clap, to, clap your hands together. Why? Yeah, because to enter that room is not easy. When you enter that room and see how your wife is pushing human being out, you will respect her the more. If you are not there before, please be there. <laughs> be there because I want you to understand. Because we are in together. We are into it together. And we push everything out together. The good thing will push it out. The sweet thing will push it out. The bad one will push it out together. That is how God will be pleased with us. Amen. So we gather our children and teach them the word of God. Not only teaching them the word of God. We do what the word of God says. Because if our children see us as hypocrites, it's become a, a stormy block to them. Let's go to church. Say, I'm not going. Even daddy that is going to church, they start gossiping you. Daddy and mommy that is going to church, what are they achieving? What are they doing? They will say what other thing they are saying is. When you reach there, uh, whatsoever you want to reach, instead of you to say the truth, and your, your children know the truth, and they know what have happened, and you are saying lie. Children nowadays, it's not like our days. They will tell you the truth. Daddy, mommy, why did you lie? Yeah. Our, our days, they will say, shut up, what do you know? And you will shut up. You can't say anything, but you go and gossip them outside. But children nowadays, I'll say, Daddy, I'm sorry, but I want to tell you the truth. <laughs> Daddy, why did you lie that time? And you are telling us not to lie. What will you tell that child? And that child will grow with it. And that child will pass it to their children. It not become a generational cause, is it? Generational blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when a man stands well at home, and arrange when everything will be okay. See what happened in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 7, verse 18 to 25. A man called Achan, because I don't really have time. A man called Achan sin against God. He took the Babylonian clothes. He stole it and hid it in his tent. Amen. Now what happened? They now ask him, because they are fighting a war, just one place like this, they cannot win that war. What happened? They start, Joshua the priest start asking, God, what have we done? We have been conquering these people. We have been conquering people that is bigger than this city. What is going on? Somebody has seen among you. Who has seen? At the end of the day, Achan was taken. What happened? A father that had already destroyed the home. A father that already lied. A father that is a, is a thief. At the end of the day, they stole all of them to death. Just because of one man. Read further. Just because of one man, the whole family was stoned to death. What happened in the book of Acts as well? Ananias and Sapphira, what happened? A man that stands and said, No, I did not sell possession like this. You are lying when the Holy Ghost knows what you are talking about. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, the man brings the problem to the house. Praise Master Jesus. I pray that we will not bring problems to our house in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The father in the house, they are very wonderful and powerful. In the book of Numbers, praise God. In the book of Numbers 27, if you read 2, verse 2 and 3, the Bible talk about the children of Zelophehad. There was no men among them. There just five girls. At the end of the day, they don't think, even though we don't have brothers, my father don't have a man child. 
But this is our inheritance supposed to be given to us. You know when a man is not in the family, the other family will oppress them. That is why I said in the absence of a real man, oppression will come. But when you have man at home, nobody can dare that person. It's just like you have brothers. Somebody said, I want to come and beat this girl. They are going to meet a lion. Praise God. Now, the woman said, we are going to meet Moses. Moses, I know my father has died in wilderness. I know he has died of his sin. But we have come for you to give us our inheritance. I give God the glory for the life of that girl. For the life of all those women that have the boldness, that have that courage just to go out and say, give us our inheritance. You know what the Bible said? Moses asked God. God said, give it to them. Amen. Amen. Give it to them. What am I trying to say? If maybe the man is at home, if maybe there's a mad child, that kind of thing can never happen. The man will stand, give us our head, they now share it among the sisters. Fathers, as I pray in the name of Jesus, what God has entrusted in your hand, it will not die. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you stand as the head of the family, as you stand as the head of the home, as you stand as an umbrella, your umbrella will not catch fire. Amen. The protection of God in your life will not be removed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. as God show us mercy, may the mercy of God come to rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray anyone that is passing one thing or the other through in their home, I declare peace upon their home. In the name of Jesus Christ, today you will testify. You will say this Father's Day are different from other Father's Day. You are going to testify after today. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. No matter the circumstances, no matter what you are passing through in your career, there is nothing Jesus cannot do. Jesus did not go to school for us to go to school. Jesus lived a life for us to live more than him. Hallelujah. He said, I will give you life and you will have life more and abundantly. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, whatsoever that will make us not to live what God expects us to live, I command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. That Father that God make us to be. We will be that in the name of Jesus. Amen. I close with this. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1. What did he say? Amen. A fast reader is there. Hallelujah. Paul and Apostle. Paul and Apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. Mm. Verse 2. Who has called Read verse 5. Verse 5. When I call to remembrance mm -hmm. of faith, faith that is in thee, mm -hmm. which God first in thy grandmother Lloyd and thy mother Julie, praise God. And I'm persuaded. Thank you, Daddy. Do you hear that? He said, When I remember what dwell in you first, do you hear that first there? What dwell in you first? And that what dwell in you first, that is what you pass to your generation. Apostle Paul is talking to Timothy. Timothy, I have been seeing you the way you are going. It is what I saw in you. That your grandmother and your mother passed to you. What are we passing to our children? What are our children taking from us? Praise God. Our children, is it taking faith from us or failure? Hallelujah. So is it what dwell in you first? I see it, I remember it, and I'm seeing it from your mother to you. So it's not a generational faith of a thing. So whatsoever you have in you first... The Bible says, seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added to you. It is what you seek first. And it, was, it is what you have first. You give to your children. You cannot give what you don't have. Praise God. Amen. You cannot give what you don't have. If you have peace, you give that peace to your children. Amen. Jesus Christ said, peace I give unto you. Not like the word given. So because Jesus had that peace in him, that is why he gave it to us. Amen. So you see a man that, you see what the pastor said. Even we in the church, we can attest to that. Pastor Godwin. Pastor Godwin, yeah? Godfrey. Godfrey. The man always dance and laugh. Even though the son said he don't know how to dance, I will testify that. <laughs> and many of us will testify it. Yes. Why? Because we are seeing it. Praise God. It's man in love. Please, don't touch your face. Let it be loose. Because you are passing that to your children. They will say, why is it that you always frown face? And you tell them to smile. They will fake it. But when you start imparting it in them, they will have it in their life. Amen. 
Are you the one that dance? Are you the one that sing? Are you the one that do some kind of thing where the children will be happy? The children will remember. Spend time with them. Don't say they are very little. They know what you don't know sometimes. When they open their mouth to speak, you will say, where did you hear this from? They know something. So it passed in them the word of God. The word of God, when they dwell in it, yeah. even though we are not there, they will continue oh, with it. And they will give it to their children's children. I will not regret it in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. When I was growing, the perfume I'm using today, I took it from my father. I can tell you that. You see, we think that is little. When you spend time with your children, or what you are doing, they are seeing it. What my father was doing, I was seeing it. I love that perfume. When I grow up, because that time I was just a little girl, and I cannot afford the perfume, but it was very expensive. But when I now grow up, I say that perfume, I love it, I will buy it. You can imagine it's a cigarette. You can imagine it's a, the other thing. Then I must say, I now grow up, I want to copy from my father. I now copy Barty. Amen. So let us do the needful. Let us do the right thing, and everything will be well with us. As we shout, hallelujah. hallelujah.